Have you ever wondered why some people crumble under stress, while others seem to thrive? What makes the difference? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? We all encounter stress in our lives, but our reactions to it vary wildly. To unravel this mystery, we can turn to the field of psychology, specifically Richard Lazarus and Susan Folkman's transactional model of stress and coping. This model provides a unique lens through which we can examine and understand our responses to stress. It posits that stress is not just an event that happens to us, but a transaction between us and our environment, affected by our interpretation and appraisal of the situation. The model introduces two key concepts, primary and secondary appraisal. These appraisals are cognitive processes that we use to evaluate and cope with the stressors in our lives. This video will delve into the concepts of primary and secondary appraisal, to help us understand how we evaluate and cope with stress. Picture this, you've just been given a major project at work with a tight deadline, your heart rate increases, your palms sweat, this is your body responding to stress, but how does your mind respond? Well, that's where primary appraisal comes into play. In the grand arena of stress and coping, primary appraisal is like the judge who comes to the scene first. This judge is not concerned with the details of how you'll handle the situation. Rather, it's focused on sizing up the situation itself. Is it a threat? Is it a challenge? Or is it something that doesn't concern you at all? That's what primary appraisal is all about. Think of it as your mind's first response, like a bodyguard scanning a crowd for potential threats. For instance, consider an upcoming job interview. Your primary appraisal might file that under stressful. It's a situation that could potentially lead to a negative outcome, like not getting the job. Or maybe you're someone who thrives under pressure, so your primary appraisal marks it as a challenge, as a chance to showcase your skills and land a great job. Another example would be an upcoming exam. Maybe you've studied well and you're confident about your preparation. Your primary appraisal might then categorize the exam as benign positive, a situation that's neither threatening nor challenging, but rather an opportunity to excel. The key takeaway here is that primary appraisal is subjective. It's not about the situation itself, but rather how we perceive it. Two people might experience the same situation differently based on their primary appraisal. One might see a tight deadline as a stressor, while another might view it as a challenge to be conquered. So, primary appraisal is our first line of mental defense, helping us categorize the situation as irrelevant, benign positive, or stressful. It's like our mind's initial game plan, a crucial first step in understanding and managing stress. Now, let's say you've identified this project as a challenge. What comes next? How do you decide what to do about it? Well, that's where secondary appraisal comes into play. This is the second step in Lazarus and Folkman's transactional model of stress and coping. Once we've identified a situation as stressful during the primary appraisal, we move on to the secondary appraisal. This is the stage where we assess our resources and options for coping with the stressor. It's the mental process where we ask ourselves, what can I do about this? Let's consider an example. Suppose you have a big exam coming up, this is definitely a stressor, and you've identified it as such in the primary appraisal stage. Now, in the secondary appraisal, you start to consider your options. You think about the time you have available for studying, the materials at your disposal, and the different studying methods you could use. You consider whether you could form a study group with classmates or maybe seek help from a tutor. Imagine another scenario. You're facing a complex project at work with a tight deadline. Again, in the primary appraisal, you've recognized this as a stressful situation. Now you're in the secondary appraisal stage. You think about the team members you have to work with, their skills and how you can utilize them. You consider the possibility of asking for an extension or perhaps outsourcing some of the tasks. In both examples, you're evaluating your resources and options for coping with the stressor. You're not just recognizing the stressor, but actively figuring out how to deal with it. This process is essential because it helps us determine whether a stressor is manageable or not. If we perceive that we have the resources to cope, the situation is less likely to lead to stress. 
But if we feel overwhelmed with few resources or options, the stressor can seem insurmountable. Secondary appraisal then is our strategy session where we figure out how to tackle the stressor head on. So, we've determined the stressor and devised a plan, but why does this matter? Why is understanding these appraisals important? Well, the truth is, the significance of understanding primary and secondary appraisals in managing stress cannot be overstated. These appraisals act like a roadmap, guiding us through the labyrinth of our emotional responses to stressors. Without this roadmap, we might find ourselves lost in a maze of unproductive reactions, exacerbating our stress rather than alleviating it. Let's delve a bit deeper. Primary appraisal allows us to identify a stressor, and it's through this identification that we can take the first step towards managing our stress. Think of it like a smoke detector. Just as a smoke detector alerts us to the presence of fire so we can respond appropriately, primary appraisal alerts us to the presence of stress, allowing us to prepare for action. On the other hand, secondary appraisal provides us with the tools to manage that stress. It's like a firefighter's toolkit, providing us with various strategies and options to tackle the blaze. Without understanding our secondary appraisal, we might find ourselves using a water hose on an electrical fire, making the situation worse. Becoming aware of these processes enables us to better manage our reactions to stressors. We can become more mindful of our emotional responses, separating ourselves from the immediate impact of the stressor and allowing us to choose the most effective coping strategy. Just as a firefighter would assess a fire before deciding which tool to use, we can assess our emotional responses and decide on the best course of action. Moreover, understanding our appraisals can help us develop resilience. By recognizing our stressors and responses, we can learn from past experiences and adjust our coping strategies for future challenges. We can become more resilient in the face of life's trials and tribulations, turning adversity into an opportunity Want to rise to your full potential in your studies and revise like a boss? You can trust Study Guide today to have you covered. Subscribe to this channel and see our website linked in the description of this video to see revision articles to maximize your study gains.